This is London in the year 50, when it was the Roman town of Londinium. Over 1,000 years later, in the 1100s, it doesn't look very different. Here it is 300 years later, in the 1400s, and another 300 years, in the 1700s. For the first 1700 years of the city's existence, not too much had changed about it. But if we go another 300 years in the future, to today, we see before us an almost unrecognizable city. Not only is its population 18 times larger, but it holds skyscrapers, airports, public transportation, modern hospitals, the list goes on and on. The fact is, London and many of the world's old cities have changed more in the last 300 years than in all the rest of their existence. Human civilization hasn't seen a leap like what it experienced from this picture to this picture since human civilization began during the agricultural revolution, when humans switched from hunting and gathering to farming and living in houses and societies. So what happened between the 1700s and today that changed the world so much? The answer? The Industrial Revolution, brought on by a little black rock called coal that would change the world forever. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host Carter. Today, how the advent of fossil fuels sparked the industrial revolution, and why another switch, this time to renewable energies, can create another, one that could be incredibly beneficial to humankind. Most people around the world burned wood to heat their homes and to cook their food, and had been since, well, the dawn of humankind. Wood was a major source of energy, but besides cooking and heating, there wasn't a whole lot wood fuels were useful for. This was because wood isn't that combustible. It can only burn for so long before the fire goes out. But by the late 1700s, Britain had used so much that they were starting to run out of wood. Without it, they wouldn't be able to live their lives the way they always had. They needed something else. And when they found it, it would change their lives and the world forever. Coal had been mined in Britain for centuries, but it was never extracted on a large scale because mining technology was pretty basic. There was no need to improve the technology simply because wood supply was abundant. But once farmland began spreading across the island, trees began to disappear, and wood, necessary for cooking and heating, became very expensive. There was high demand for coal, but the main problem with coal mining was that the mines would often flood, rendering them useless. This was solved with the invention of the steam engine. Water would be heated, creating steam, which would push or turn something. Steam engines could be used to get water out of the mines. As steam engines became mainstream, coal started to become a cheaper alternative. At the beginning of the 18th century, Britain mined 3 million tons of coal a year. At the end of the century, they were mining 30 million. Coal came with one major benefit to wood. It burned for a longer amount of time, producing more heat. Because of this, it could do things that wood couldn't, such as make it easier to produce iron. Most importantly, it could make better steam engines, and therefore allow people to mine more coal. Steam engines could do a lot of other things too, especially when run on coal. They could transport people great distances by train. They could spin turbines that would generate electricity, powering looms that could produce mass amounts of clothing much faster than any person. It's hard to truly comprehend the Industrial Revolution's impact on the world, a legacy that was in some ways incredible and in some ways terrible for humanity. One way to look at it is through world population. 3,000 years ago, in the year 1000 BC, 115 million people lived on Earth. In the year zero, an entire thousand years later, the world population had only risen to 188 million. By 1700, it had been on a steady climb to 600 million. But add just 50 years, and it's already up to 800 million. By 1820, the world population hit 1 billion. 200 years later, and it's already at 7.8 billion, set to hit 8 billion in just 4 years, and 10 billion by 2050. This stark population increase is due to a higher standard of living across the world. Coal power and electricity made mass production and distribution of food much easier, helping raise a basic standard of living in countries who had access to coal, 
and bringing electricity into homes. It brought about the economic system of capitalism, whose competitive nature rewarded innovation, leading to the production of more and more advanced technology and more sophisticated medicine. Science prospered, and improved fertilizers increased crop yields, leading to a decrease in world hunger. As capitalism spread and the economy of countries left control of their governments, monarchs began to lose power, and democratic systems of government began to become more common. But improving technology meant that weaponry was improved as well. Wars after the Industrial Revolution became much worse, with 40 million people dying in World War I and 75 million in World War II, the highest death toll of any war in human history, as weapons like tanks, planes, submarines, the atomic bomb made it much easier to kill people. But it has also led to perhaps the downfall of war itself, as improved transportation, communication, and trade makes different countries dependent on one another. Deaths from wars have seen a significant decrease since World War II, with no major global conflicts occurring. Overall, people are healthier and more well off since the Industrial Revolution. Besides that, it's possible to travel between continents in hours to communicate instantly with someone on the other side of the globe, to build structures that are thousands of feet tall, and to completely eradicate horrible diseases like smallpox. But the Industrial Revolution has also left some unsolved problems. It only really occurred in areas that had massive coal deposits, like Europe, East Asia, and the United States. Places that lacked the natural resources to undergo their own industrialization, like Africa and South America, became subject to imperialism by places that were coal rich. Today, regions that had less coal in the 1700s are still significantly poorer than regions that had more, trapping them in pre-industrial squalor and creating a dependence on richer nations. Today, the world is mostly dependent on a different fossil fuel, oil. But oil has often been the downfall of countries with a lot of it. Look at Venezuela, who built their economy around profits from oil, and whose society fell apart when oil prices dropped. In the Middle East, conflicts often revolve around competition for this precious natural resource, creating extreme instability in the region. Finally, the burning of fossil fuels is bad for the environment. Pollution has become a major problem in countries like China, where lung disease is a major cause of death. Emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere from the burning of coal and oil is warming the planet and melting ice caps, a process that is releasing massive amounts of water into the ocean and submerging low-lying coastal areas, which are often major centers of population. Coal and oil are also running out, with peak oil, the day when maximum oil is produced and supply will be in the drop, looking to occur at some point within the next two decades. Reaching peak oil would be devastating. Oil prices would skyrocket, sending the global economy into shambles. On top of that, many people would lose access to electricity. Many of the modern necessities the Industrial Revolution brought about, such as transportation of food to population centers, or access to news and information, would be severely affected if cars couldn't fill up on gas and power plants couldn't send electricity to people's homes. It is difficult to imagine a world like that which isn't engaged in global turmoil and instability. It is almost like we are reliving the world Britain knew in the early 1700s. A major natural resource, back then wood, today fossil fuels, is on the brink of running out and changing life as we know it. Embracing a different source of energy will not be easy, but in the long run, it could make the world a much better place. Like I mentioned earlier, the Industrial Revolution did a lot for humanity but it left some problems unsolved. Renewable energy, produced by sources such as wind, solar, and hydroelectric, has the potential to solve them. By definition, renewable energy doesn't run out. As long as the sun shines, the wind blows, and water flows, humankind can have access to electricity. And because they have a limitless supply, prices will wind up pretty cheap. I can envision a future where one day electricity is so inexpensive that everyone can afford it. Besides that, whereas coal and oil were scattered randomly across the globe, with a nation's fortunes decided by the luck of geography, every country has either sunlight, water, or wind. Countries that today are struggling to get by could prosper, and do so not at the expense of other nations. Finally, people across the world could breathe clean air, 
and drink clean water. Residents of coastal areas wouldn't have to worry about losing their homes to rising seas. People living in drier climates won't have to fear droughts becoming more common, and forested areas could be less susceptible to wildfire. Electric vehicles are already proving their incredible potential. Electric scooters are getting people out of their cars, reducing traffic and opening access for people to travel quickly through areas once only accessible by cyclists and pedestrians. A move to self-driving cars could reduce the size of roads, and especially parking lots, as people are picked up and dropped off by driverless vehicles like they are taking an Uber, completely reinventing the layout of urban areas and making cities more walkable, livable, and happy. Capitalism could be strengthened as income inequality decreases, democracy reinforced as declining poverty leads to political stability, with authoritarian regimes losing bargaining power over other countries as each nation builds energy independence. Long story short, it's time for another industrial revolution, a renewable revolution that can improve the world and the human experience for many centuries to come. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.